Professor Lakshman Al Watawala, founder and president of the Institute of the Chartered Professional Management of Sri Lanka. Dr. Samantha Ratnayake, chairman of panel of judges of the Best Management Practices Company Awards 2024. All judges at the panel of judges, all governing council and advisory council members of CPM Sri Lanka. Mr. Adra Edi Sinha, trustee, Justica Trust and past president of Justica, all staff of CPM Sri Lanka and all participants today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want, wanna come, good evening. At the outset, I would like to thank the Institute of Chartered Professional Managers of Sri Lanka, CPM Sri Lanka, for holding this auspicious event, award ceremony of the best management practices company awards 2024 at a very crucial juncture of this country and inviting me as a chief guest. As we gather here to recognize, us, recognize and celebrate the managerial excellence of various companies, we must acknowledge the vital role that management practices of companies play in boosting the economy of Sri Lanka. The good management of companies is the driving force behind the economic development, job creation, and the overall well-being of nation's citizens. Ladies and gentlemen, today, as Sri Lanka is making a strenuous effort to come out of the crisis, I would like to introduce to you the significant social and economic transformation in post-war Japan and the lessons that could be relevant in, contem in contemporary Sri Lankan context. The San Francisco Peace Conference in 1951 marked a crucial moment for Japan's return to the global stage. Sri Lankan President J.R. Jayawardana played a vital role by advocating forgiveness and endorsing Japan's inclusion in the post-war order. His sub support resonated deeply with the representatives from the very victorious countries and the Japanese people alike, particularly when he expressed solidarity with Japan, stating, we in Asia who have been the victims of aggression do not wish to inflict upon Japan any suffering. President Jawardana's decision was influenced by his visit to Japan prior to the conference witnessing Japan's efforts towards democracy and peace firsthand and meeting with Prime Minister Shigeru Yoshida at the time provided him with unique insights before going to the San Francisco conference. His backing went beyond mere diplomacy. It catalyzed Japan's acceptance and reintegration into the international community, marking a pivotal moment in Japan's pursuit of peaceful development and global cooperation. This episode underscores the enduring friendship between Japan and Sri Lanka, demonstrating how empathy and mutual understanding can overcome past conflicts, fostering mutual prosperity and enduring peace. Ladies and gentlemen, the post American occupation era from 1952 in Japan marked the onset of Japan's economic miracle accompanied by sweeping political and administrative reforms. The success was not only driven by government-led economic planning, technological innovation, and a dedicated workforce, but also by visionary changes in governance. The government's strategic role in steering the economy through policies such as tax incentives or the use of development banks in strategic industrial sectors remained instrumental. The economic miracle brought about not just economic prosperity, but a holistic transformation of Japanese society and culture. This transformative period witnessed the creation of a large middle class, improved living standards, and the dawn of a new consumer culture. In Japanese politics, conservative parties have long governed Japan, initially under the Liberal Party, led by Shigeru Yoshida, succeeded by the creation of the Liberal Democratic Party, LDP, in 1955, which is the current ruling party, through the merger of the Liberal and Democratic Parties. The Liberal Democratic Party has maintained power apart from a brief period of center-left coalition rule. This stability in politics had an effect of facilitating sustained economic growth, 
which elevated living standards, fostered a sizable middle class and built essential infrastructure. However, prolonged LDP rule fostered collusion among politicians, bureaucrats, and business interests. LDP members required substantial campaign funds due to the competitive multi-seat multi constituency electoral system, leading to instances like the Lockheed bribery scandal involving former Prime Minister Kakue Tanaka in 1976. Japan's strength lies in the independence of its pro prosecutors and judges from political influence evident in their pursuit of even the most powerful figures implicated in corruption scandals. Among political parties, efforts were made to address issues, including improvement of electoral systems and regulating political funding. Initiatives against corruption include enhancing transparency in political funding through amendments to the Political Funds Control Act which was enacted in 1948, and revised and reinforced multiple times after scandals. Additionally, electoral system reforms, such as adoption of the single-member single district system in 1996, have mitigated internal fund distribution conflicts within the ruling party. Although corruption persists to some extent, and even now, Japan has made significant strides in combating it throughout its post-war history. After the Second World War II, Japan returned to the international community as a peaceful nation and provided the first economic assistance to the Colombo Plan, which was established in 1951, and began providing economic assistance to developing Asian countries. For Sri Lanka, there were numerous important infrastructure projects carried out with Japan's assistance, such as Sri Jawaldana Hospital, Sri Lanka Rupawahini Corporation, Colombo Port, Ramboda Tunnel, Manna Pita, Pitiya Bridge, etc. These projects are still remembered by many as symbols of a lasting friendly relationship between the two countries. I would also like to touch upon the role of the Japanese style management that uh, Professor Lakshman mentioned in his speech as well. In the area of uh, business management, that has also had a significant impact on the post-war economic development of Japan. This management style emphasizes through efficiency and quality control, uh, uh, excuse me, thorough efficiency and quality control, as well as close co cooperation with workers, which has enabled Japanese companies to enhance competitiveness and achieve success in the international market. Particularly, advanced production methods such as the Toyota production system, 5S or Kaizen have influenced companies worldwide, including those in Sri Lanka, contributing to improvements in efficiency and productivity. Moreover, Japanese style management has brought about an emphasis on harmony between companies and society, leading to increased stability for workers and enhanced productivity. These elements have played a crucial role in Japan's post-war economic development. Ladies and gentlemen, for Sri Lanka, there are several lessons to be learned from Japan's experience, but I would like to highlight two key points. Firstly, the effective ut utilization of external pressure. Looking back on Japan's history, most important reforms in Japan that were achieved would not have been possible without pressure from the international community. In the aftermath of World War II, under the occupation of the Allied forces, Japan embarked on a transformative journey, witnessing profound reforms that went beyond the conservative norms of the pre-war era. The reformist leaders of Japan had made wise decisions under foreign pressure and under foreign occupation, sometimes making use of it to achieve otherwise unattainable reforms. Today, Sri Lanka is working with IMF. Reforms such as tax reform might have been challenging. However, viewing the utilization of such external pressure should not be seen as a weakness, but uh, as a testament to the wisdom, wisdom of leaders. From international perspectives, 
agreements with, an, with the IMF serve as backing for Sri Lanka's commitment to pursuing rational and consistent economic policies. Japan would not have supported the de debt restructuring negotiation of Sri Lanka without agreement with IMF, which assures productivity of Sri Lankan economic policies. Furthermore, I would like to touch upon corruption problems because it is a challenge both for Japan and Sri Lanka. Observing Sri Lankan politics since I came here, I think there are two aspects in problems of corruption in Sri Lanka. First, corruption is a source of distrust, distrust of politicians by the people, and therefore a cause of political instability. Secondly, it is very harmful when Sri Lanka wants to attract foreign investment. Foreign investors are wanting a transparent and predictable business environment. The shareholders of the investing companies also insist on it. Japanese companies, in spite of collusion with the politicians in the past, are nowadays strictly observing the compliance obligation and therefore never offer kickbacks to foreign politicians. If that kind of culture remains in Sri Lanka, there is no prospect for Japanese investors coming into Sri Lanka. I am saying this because I would like to see more Japanese investment in Sri Lanka to support economic growth in Sri Lanka. I hope in Sri Lanka ongoing anti-corruption reforms, including the reform of commission to investigate allegations of bribery or corruption, SIABOC, and draw lessons from various countries, including Japan, to develop, to develop effective anti-corruption mechanisms. And we would like to support such reforms. Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude this speech, I am reminded of the enduring bonds between our two nations. The historical episode of President J.R. Jawardena's support to Japan during the San Francisco Peace Conference symbolizes the compassion and understanding that triumphs over past grievances, setting the stage for mutual prosperity and lasting peace. I have been observing Sri Lanka as ambassador of Japan for over two years. I felt that the impact of financial crisis, the worst in the history of Sri Lanka, is equivalent of Japan's crisis, economic crisis after World War II. Japan's experiences of turning the crisis to opportunity for success that I related today hopefully will give hints and generate insights into overcoming adverse, adversity, embracing change, and fostering growth. As Sri Lanka stands at the crossroads of economic challenges, I encourage all of us to, to draw inspiration from Japan's transformative journey. As Japan looks back on its journey of modernization and the transformative reforms that led to the prosperity of Japan, I am hopeful that Sri Lanka, drawing from those, these lessons, can chart its course towards a future of resilience, innovation, and prosperity. In the spirit of enduring friendship, let us work together towards a shared vision of progress and may the bonds between Japan and Sri Lanka continue to strengthen and prosper. Ladies and gentlemen, finally, once again, to the excellent companies being honored today, I extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of you. Continue, please continue to innovate, create, and inspire for your efforts benefit to your companies and your country. Also, I sincerely hope that your experience and good management practices that is showcased through this event will be shared widely with many other companies around the country and will contribute in a broader sense to the economic development of your country. Thank you very much indeed for your kind attention.